Okay, so this is the note for Section 62 Isosceles Triangles. If you haven't done so already, make sure you stop the video and read the section first before continuing on. Uh, the big idea here is that as we look at reflection symmetric triangles, and those triangles are the isosceles triangles, okay? Isosceles triangles are the, are the ones that are reflection symmetric. They possess properties that scaling triangles do not possess, and that's what we want to look at really in this section. Well, in order, in order to do that, we have to first kind of look at an isosceles triangle, what the different parts of that triangle are. So the, we're going to break that down into three parts, the vertex angle, the base, and the base angles. The vertex angle, as I look at this triangle over here, is the angle that is, is determined by the equal sides of the isosceles triangle. So if these are the sides that are equal in my triangle, then angle A would be my vertex angle. Okay. The base of the triangle is the, sides opposite, is the side opposite the vertex. Therefore, the base of this, so if this is A, okay, then BC would be opposite. So BC would be the base of that triangle. Okay. And then the base angles would be the angles at those endpoints. So angle B and angle C would be the base angles of that triangle. So based on the information we just talked about, if you could just um, pause the video at this time and see if you can do numbers 1 through 3, and then once you turn it back on, I will, um, I'll have the answers there for you. Okay, since TR and TI are the equal sides of this isosceles triangle, then angle T would have to be the vertex angle, R and I would have to be then the base angles, and then the segment RI would have to be the base of that triangle. Okay, now that we've established the different parts of an isosceles triangle, let's look at the symmetry that isosceles triangles possess. The first is the isosceles triangle symmetry theorem. And what we're saying in, the, in this theorem is that the line containing the bisector of the vertex angle, remember the, the, the uh, bisector means that we're talking about the, the, uh, the segment or ray or, or line that divides that angle into two equal angles. So we take that line, that line will represent the symmetry line for that triangle. So this line right over here would be the symmetry line for this triangle, <clears throat> assuming this is my vertex angle, which it is based on the fact that these are the equal sides. Okay. Okay, next I'd like to talk about the isosceles triangle coincidence theorem. And in order to do that, I have to first uh, define a couple of things that the the altitude and the median of a triangle. Okay, we've, we've, we know about the, the, um, the bisector, the vertex angle, but we haven't defined the altitude and the median. The altitude of a triangle is the segment from the vertex perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. Okay? And the median of a triangle is the segment connecting a vertex of the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. Well, here's what the coincidence theorem says. If I look at the altitude and the median and the bisector of that vertex angle, all three of those things will be the exact same line in every isosceles triangle. So the line that I drew up here for isosceles triangle symmetry theorem, that line applies for, it is, it, that line contains the altitude, it contains the median, and it contains the bisector. So that line represents a lot of parts of an isosceles triangle. And that's what the isosceles triangle coincidence theorem is telling us. Okay, the next theorems that I'd like to take a look at are the isosceles triangle base angle theorem and the converse of that theorem. Um, we will generally refer to the isosceles triangle base angle theorem as ITBAT. And, and ITBAT is, is a theorem that we're going to use quite a bit as we do uh, proofs. So it's one you might want to kind of highlight a little bit. Okay? 
and it says the following. If a triangle has two congruent sides, in other words, it's isosceles, <coughs> then the angles opposite them are congruent. So this picture here shows exactly what we're talking about. We have a triangle that is isosceles, and if I know that, then I know the angles. Remember, when I just have those arcs in the same angles, those angles would be congruent to each other as well. Okay? In terms of numbers, if two sides of a triangle have equal lengths, then the angles opposite them have equal measures. So we can talk about it in terms of congruence, and we can talk about it in terms of their numbers equality. Okay? Now the converse of, of the it bat is true as well, and that is if I know the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, well then I also know the sides opposite those base angles have to be congruent as well. Okay? And once again, we can think about that in terms of numbers as well. If the measures of these two angles are equal, then the um, length of these two sides have to be equal as well. Okay, so let's take a, the, a look at these examples here for number four. Um, first of all, if we look at this triangle ABC, if I want to find the measure of angle A, well, the measure of angle A it has to be equal to the measure of angle C because these sides, these sides here, are congruent. Therefore, the measures of these angles have to be the same. So if C is 69, well, then A would have to be that as well. Okay? And then to find uh, angle B, I'm going to take 180, the total measures of the triangle, and I'm going to subtract out what I know. Well, I know both of these angles are 69, so if I add those two up, that would be 138 degrees. Okay? Therefore, the measure of angle B must be 42 degrees. Okay? Okay, so in this other triangle over here, if I want to find PQ, well, I know that PQ and PR have to be equal to each other. Therefore, since P, uh, excuse me, PQ and QR have to be equal to each other, therefore it must be 17. Which means that if I want to find X, I can set up an equation where this is equal to this. So I can say 4X minus 9 is equal to 17. Okay? And then I can go through and solve that 4X. I'd like you to, to pause the video at this time and see if you can do that. Okay, so if I solve that for x, here's the, here's the work that I would do to do that. Add 9 and then divide by 4. So x would be equal to 6.5. And then if I want to find pr, I'm going to plug 6.5 in for x. So it would be 2 times 6.5 plus 3, which would be equal to 16. So there's the rest of the answers to number 4. Okay, the unequal sides and angles theorems. Um, deal with triangles when, when sides are not the same length or angles are not the same measure. And the first one is with sides. Unequal sides theorem just says if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the angles opposite them are not congruent, and the larger angle is opposite the larger side. So that's kind of the key part of that, is that the larger angle is opposite the larger side. Now we can do the same thing if I look at angles, and we can say that the longer side is opposite the larger angle. So it kind of goes both ways. So that's what we're getting at with those unequal sides and angles theorems. Okay, so here's the answers for 5 and 6. If you look at um, that triangle PQR, in order for me to do that, I need to find what that third angle is first. And it turns out the third angle, the measure angle Q, would be 180 minus the other two angles, which is 55 degrees, which means that the shortest ang or the smallest angle is 53. Therefore, the side opposite that has to be the shortest side. Well, if R is the angle, the side opposite it would be the other two values. So to, to get that, that's... I'm using P and Q, so that would be my shortest side. 
Okay, and then for number six, if we're going to order those angles from smallest to largest, I want to look at the, the sides. Well, the smallest side is MN, therefore the angle opposite MN would be I. The next small side is NI, the opposite would be M, and finally MI would be the longest, so that's where N comes from. Okay? Okay, let's look at number seven here then. It says given that AD and AE are congruent, angle D and angle B are congruent, and we want to prove that DE is parallel to BC. Okay? Well, because I know these sides are congruent here, okay, I can say that this angle here, E, must also be congruent to angle D because it is uh, a base angle of an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to say D, E, D and E are congruent based on it, bat, or isosceles triangle base angle theorem. Then I'm going to say B, E are congruent because they uh, of the transitive property. Okay, so if D is congruent to B and D is congruent to E, then B and E have to be congruent to each other. And then I would have um, alternate interior angles are equal or congruent. Therefore, according to alternate interior angle postulate, I know that DE and BC must be parallel to each other. And now I've proved exactly what I wanted to in number seven there.